right, well, we begin Unit 8, and Unit 8 is entitled Linear Functions, and Section 8.1, Relations and Functions. In this particular unit, we're going to be spending a lot of time looking at equations that have two variables instead of just one. And so we're going to kind of start from the beginning, talk about the idea of what a relation is, what a function is, and work our way up to eventually where we're graphing equations in two variables on the coordinate axis. Now back in unit one, way back in unit one, we did graph sets of ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. And I have an example right here. The ordered pairs are 1, 2, 2, 4, 0, 3, and 5, 0. And I drew a very crude looking coordinate plane. You would probably use a grid or graph paper to make your um, graphing go a little bit easier. The first ordered pair, remember this is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate. This tells us how much right or left, this tells us how much up or down. So from where they cross, that's the origin, where the x-axis or the horizontal axis and the y-axis, the vertical axis cross, I'm going to go one unit to the right, two units up. So from here I'm going to go one to the right, up two, and I'm going to put a dot right there. Remember this is the x, this is the y. This is going to take me two to the right and then four up. Two to the right and then up four would be about here. You can see where a grid would come in handy. Zero, three. Zero means I'm not going to go to the right or to the left at all, and I'm going to go three up. 0, 3 would be right here. And then 5, 0, this means I'm going to go 5 to the right, and then 0 up or down. So 5 to the right, 0 up or down, we'll put it right here on the x-axis. That's an example of graphing that we did way back a long time ago in Unit 1. Well, this set of ordered pairs, we didn't know it at that time, but it has a name. It's called a relation. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. Okay, So this is an example of a relation. And as you can see, there are pairs of numbers. There's the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, the x and the y, the x and the y. Well, these numbers come from two different sets. We are going to pair numbers from one set, known as the domain, with numbers to another set, known as the range. These numbers come from a set called the domain. They're paired up with a number from the range. This number from the domain, this number from the range, and so on. Each number in the domain, sometimes it's called an input, it's what we substitute into our equation with two variables, but we'll get to that in a little bit, or the x-coordinates of the ordered pairs, the 1, the 2, the 0, and the 5. They pair up with each number in the range, which we call an output, or the y-coordinate of the ordered pairs. That's the 2, the 4, the 3, and the 0. So I have a couple of examples here of uh, relations that have four ordered pairs, and I'm going to identify the domain and the range, and I'm going to write the domain and the range as a set. So I'm going to use the braces, like I have here around this set of ordered pairs. I'm going to, for the domain, I'm going to call it capital D. I'm going to put the brace, and I see that they're all the x's. So I have 0, 2, 3, and 5. And they're already in order, so I'll put them in order from least to greatest. 0, 2, 3, and 5. That's my domain. My range would be the set of all the y's. That would be the 1, the 4, the 7, and the 4. Now I have 4 twice, so I'm not going to write it twice. I'm only going to write it once. So I'll write the 1, the 4, and the 7. And again, I like to put them in order from least to greatest. Okay, so that seemed pretty simple. And then over here, just about the same thing. Just one more example. I threw a negative number in. That's no big deal. My domain would be all my x values. That would be the negative 2, the 0, the 1, and the 2. Negative 2, 0, 1, and 2. It's kind of convenient when they're already in order. And the range would be all my y values. That would be the 1, the 4, the 3, and the 3. Again, I've used 3 twice, so I'm not going to write it twice. I'm going to write it once. So I have 1, 4, and 3, or better yet, I'm going to write it as 1, 3, and 4. And that's the range. Let's represent the relation, uh, the set 2, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 0, 0, and negative 1, 1 as indicated. By that I mean as a graph and as a mapping diagram. You're familiar with the graph. I'll explain the mapping diagram. So all we're going to do is graph these ordered pairs. 2, 0 means 2 to the right, 0 up or down. 1, negative 1 means 1 to the right, and then since it's a negative 1, 1 down. Here in the fourth quadrant, remember first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. 2, 2, that's 2 to the right, then up 2. 0, 0, that's right at the origin, that's the easy one. And negative 1, 1 means 1 to the right and then up 1. One to the left, excuse me, and then up one. Now what I mean as far as a mapping diagram, 
see that the 2 maps to 0, so the 2 in the input maps to 0, so I draw an arrow. The 1 maps to the negative 1, so the 1 maps to the negative 1 here, so I draw an arrow. 2, 2, the 2 maps to the 2, so I draw an arrow. 0, 0, the 0 maps to the 0, so I draw an arrow. And negative 1 maps to 1, the negative 1 maps to 1, so again, I draw the arrow. And you can see it as a diagram. Now I want you to notice something here. I want you to notice that this particular pair, or this particular relation, one of the inputs corresponds to two different outputs. That didn't happen in my first examples. One of the inputs maps to two different outputs. Now I have two different inputs mapping to the same output. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about what happens when I have one of the x coordinates correspond to two different y coordinates. Well, that brings in the idea of what we call a function. A function is a relation so that for each input, there is exactly one output. And we say that the output is a function of the input, that the y is a function of the x. Because remember, we're talking about x and y coordinates of ordered pairs. The input's the x-coordinate, the output's the y-coordinate. A function has to have exactly, exactly, for each input, exactly one output. So this would not be a function because I have one input with two different outputs. Okay? It's a relation. They're all relations. But a function is kind of a special type of relation. Each input, there's exactly one output. You've got to memorize that one. That's a good one to know. Now I'm going to have a couple of examples here. It's towards the bottom, so hopefully you can read this okay. Represent the relation as a graph and as a mapping diagram, just like we did up here. Then tell whether the relation is a function. All right, so I'm going to graph 0, 3, that's 0 right or left, and then up 3, that'd be right here. 1, 2, that's 1 to the right, 2 up. 2, negative 1, that's 2 to the right, 1 down. 4, 4, that's 4 to the right, up 4. And 3, 4, that's 3 to the right, up 4. Okay, so over here, my domain 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, my uh, range would be 3, 2, negative 1, 4, and then another 4, I'm not going to write that twice, so I'll put them in order, negative 1, uh, what else, then what I have, 0, 2, and 3, 0, 2, and 3, and I have 0 mapping to the 3, I have 1, to the 2, I have 2 to the negative 1, I have 4 mapping to the 4, if I left 1 off, I had 0, 2, 3, oh hang on a second, yeah, and 4, I forgot to put the 4 down, that would help, okay, I guess I didn't need the zeros, what I didn't need, there we go, almost got this done, the 4 maps to the 4, and the 3 maps to the 4. Now, notice here that every one of the inputs has exactly one output. Now I noticed that a couple of the outputs are used more than once. The four is used twice here. It, it corresponds to the three and the four, but that's okay. I just can't have two arrows coming from the same input, and I don't. So is this a function? Yes, this is a function. Over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I have negative two, negative one, so that's two to the left, one down. I have zero, two, that's on the y-axis here. Remember, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. I have 2, 3, that's 2 to the right, and then up 3, I'm approximating there, and I have uh, negative 2, negative 2, that's 2 to the left, and then down 2, so it looks like that. Okay, so now, for uh, my input my output, I'll put my domain and ranges, they are negative 2, 0, and 2, and my range is negative 1, 2, 3, and negative 2, so negative 2, negative 1, 2 and 3. Let's see if I can do this right this time. Yeah, I think I got it. So the negative 2 maps to the negative 1. The 0 maps to the 2. The 2 maps to the 3. And the negative 2 maps to the negative 2. Well, I got a problem here. I have one input mapping to two different, corresponding to two different outputs. I have the same x coordinate here and here with different y coordinates. That's not a function, so my answer is no. Now, if you're wondering, is there a way to tell if all you have is the graph? Well, look right here. You see this? This is the trouble, this point here, or the ordered pair and this ordered pair. Notice how they line up vertically. They line up. 
So that leads us to a test to determine whether the graph represents a function. That test is called the vertical line test. If you can find a vertical line passing through more than one point of the graph, the relation is not a function. If it passes through more than one point, it's not a function. Otherwise, it is a function. The relation would be a function. So I have two examples. And I've graphed a few points. It says, tell whether the relation represents the graph of a function. OK, represented by the graph is a function, I should say. All right, well, in this case, can I draw a vertical line anywhere on my graph where it passes through more than one point? And the answer is yes, right here. OK, kind of kind of squiggly there, but you get the idea. I can draw a vertical line. It passes through this point, which looks like it's 2, 1, and this point, which looks like it's 2, negative 1. 2, 1, 2, negative 1. Do you see how they have the same input, but different outputs? They have the same x value, but different y values? Not a function. Over here, no matter where I draw my vertical line, I'm never going to cross my graph more than once. So this one is not a function. Vertical line test, this one is a function. Vertical line test. Okay, and you'll get good at this, but it just takes a lot of practice, practice, practice.